What's up guys? It's Missy. I'm back with another SimCity build a video. Today we're going to be talking about regional maps and how to unlock all five maps. For those of you guys who are not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button. Comment down below if you have any questions or video requests. You can join us on Facebook at SimCity Build It, Missy and YT, on Discord with the link below. And last, we do have one spot available in the group but you need to be somebody who is either very productive as a high level player and or on the Missy's building guide. Okay. Now, before you decide that you should be unlocking, you know, all five maps, you really need to make sure that your city is pretty much well complete in terms of storage, land unlocked, resources, things like that. Now, a lot of people level too quickly, their game screwed up, they are really low on storage the higher up they go on level the lower the amount of rares they find on the global market and the harder it becomes to win the contest of mayors make sure that your city is in very good condition before you decide to start unlocking regional maps okay now just because you have one or two maps does not mean that you should be unlocking the fourth and the fifth but if you are interested in unlocking the fourth and the fifth those are going to be the hardest ones to unlock Okay, now I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks on how to make it cheaper and easier and the best way to go about it. This way you guys understand how population boosts work because a lot of people don't understand that either. And that way by the end of the video you guys have a pretty good idea of how to get these maps unlocked. So the first thing is which map to unlock first and why. Well, for starters, okay, you need to unlock the map that you like the look of the best first. Okay. Now, when you click on this street sign, these are the maps given to you. The maps become unlockable when you guys get a certain amount of population built up on your regional maps. Okay. So your capital is the starting one. Then you have to have a certain amount of regional population in order to unlock the other regional maps. Capital population does not go towards unlocking regional maps. Now, the way that this works is, you, or, and I do have some videos on how and what you should unlock and why, but ultimately, if you unlock Frosty as not your fifth map, if you unlock it any time before the last time, the last map, I mean, it is going to make it a little bit more difficult for you in, in terms of getting that 10 million population. To unlock the fifth map, you need to have 10 million people on your regional maps. In order for that to happen, you have to have a minimum right? Well, not really a minimum, but you have to have 10 million across four maps. So whatever combination, doesn't matter. Okay. That being said, the frosty map being very skinny, it doesn't really provide a whole lot of space to do a lot of pop boost, but it is possible. So if you want the frosty map, if you like the look of the trees and the hot spots, then go for it. Okay. Um, it's just going to make it a little bit more difficult. Now, you should not unlock any regional map until, like I said, you meet all the requirements to do so, as we talked about at the beginning of the video, like storage and dozer and things like that. But before, the, before you unlock any new maps, you need to make sure that you've unlocked the entire map that you have, right? Like in terms of like land and stuff. The higher the level you are, the harder it is gonna be to find those land pieces. Now, when you do unlock a map, one of the things is going to be what to upgrade and why and how to get those numbers of population up so that you can unlock the fifth map. And I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks on how to increase population quickly and efficiently. So the first thing is understanding how population works in this game and the best way to get it boosted. Give me just a second here. Okay. So... The first thing we're going to put down a road here, not like that, but like, not like that. <laughs> Hold on. There. Okay. All right. Now, when you click on this house here, okay, on your regional maps, you can build epic projects. The only way to build an epic project in SimCity Build It on any map is to take a regular zone, 
a residential zone and build it up to maximum and then you have to wait 24 hours or 12 hours for it to be eligible for an epic project if it has specialization coverage okay so if i have a fully upgraded regular home and there's no specialization coverage anywhere near it i'm not going to get an epic project so i let's say i put transportation coverage near it in 12 hours of that being available then the transportation epic will become available okay that being said if it has multiple categories then you're gonna have to cycle through those by paying coins to to get your epic project point being if you hold down on the houses see how it says max population now if you look here see how it says 3520 so that this is a sunny home and it has 3520 when you hold down here it only shows 23 47. Now the reason for this is because this is the most people that this residence can hold without any pop boosters. Okay, that's how this thing works. This can only hold 1836. This one has a, a high service demand, which means there's going to be a lot of water, power, sewer, and, and things like that required on your map in order to keep these people happy. This one has a medium service demand, which is much lower. Okay, now when this is converted to an epic project, the base population amount is 2,411. Doesn't matter the type of epic, could be a bronze, silver, gold, doesn't matter. But the base amount is 2,411, making it significantly uh, high, well, not high, not significantly higher, but higher than this one, okay? Now, that being said, this one has a medium service demand, this one has a high one, so just keep that in mind it may be wise to build up regular homes on your regional maps. One, they require less regional items. Two, they can be converted into epic projects, which can give back to you in tokens, right? Okay, now, now that you understand how population works, when it's not converted to an epic project and there's no specialization near it, whatever the... Um, the base amount is on the house is what the amount of people is going to be when there's no pop when there's no specialization near it now the way that it works is every single category over here in your menu can be boosted 100 percent so the easiest way to show you guys this example is here we have transportation okay and it shows us that we have plus zero people on our sunny map being boosted by transportation. So there's no transportation placed on the map where it's boosting people. That being said, the coverage zone is the green square, okay? This here, every single house that this touches is being boosted by 50% because if you look here, this is a 50% pop boost, right? So we put this out there. Now it's just boosting, it's hitting more houses because it's giving 18,776 versus here is giving 15,000, doesn't matter. Point being, we're getting 50%. Now, if we place another one down, we're gonna get another 50%. Now this means that every single one of these houses that's being touched by this, this particular, both of these, here, both of them like this, are being boosted 100%, okay? Now, if you look here, If we go back and we try to put more transportation down in an area where there's 100% coverage, we're not going to get any more people. The only reason we're getting more people, if, if you look which houses are being boosted, is because those houses haven't been hit yet. So just notice how it's only doing 8,000 now and not 18,000. It's because it's hitting houses like this one over here. So let's, let's do it like this.
Okay. So right now we're only touching this one house here, right? So we've got 100% on the, just this one house. Now this one should do nothing. See? So you do that per every category. You get 100% pup boost covered across every map or across every category for your residents. And that's going to be the best possible way to go about it. So what I did to make this quick and easy was the first thing I did was I did not design on any of my regional maps. If you start designing on your regional maps, you're not going to have an easy time with this. For me to unlock all five of my maps, you would not believe how many houses I had to have. Now, at the time, I wanted to get it done quickly. I didn't realize how long it was going to take. And I did not build epic projects because those take items. I was already level 99. You know, I had everything unlocked. I had all other regional maps unlocked. It was It's extremely expensive for me to do epic projects. And it would have taken a very long time for me to do it that way. Now, what I recommend though is that you build epic projects the best that you can. I should have done epic projects, um, but I wanted to get it, like I said, I wanted to get it done quickly. So basically what I did was I made a lot of regional items all the time. I purchased as many of them as I could on the global market. And then what I did was I went through and I did a grid layout. Now what I recommend you guys do is go to your maps your regional maps lay down a grid layout. Now for a grid layout, there's several different kinds, but the one that I did was where you do... Okay, so you're gonna do two rows of houses. Like kind of, like, okay, so you see how these have, this has two rows of houses here? And then here, for this row, you're gonna put pop boosters and you're gonna to try to spread your pop boosters as evenly as possible. For example, let's say we wanna hit all of these. We're not gonna put this here. We're gonna put this maybe right in this area because it's hitting all these houses, right? And we're gonna to try to fit two transportation in here so that we have 100% boost evenly. And we're gonna place our transportation, try to get them at, try to get the pop boosters that are as high as possible for the cheapest and uh, least amount on your map. Then once you get all the transportation placed down, you guys can buy this before you have the houses built. It'll make it so much easier. You know, get your transportation placed down, go to your park section, your landmark section, get everything all purchased. What I used and what a lot of people use, I use these because they're 60% and they're, they were cheap. You know, they're like 10 platinum keys. However, if you're somebody who doesn't want to use a lot of platinum keys, a lot of people use this one, 60%, but this one costs a lot of gold keys, but it is decent. You also want to look at the area coverage. This one has a 18 by 18. This one has a 16 by 18. So there's that. Uh, a lot of people use this. This is an 85% boost. It's a four pointer, which is nice but it does cost a pretty penny for platinum keys. Now this is why I tell you guys during those Black Friday sales, you bank up all of your mega wins, then Black Friday comes and you buy all the things that you want and then spend the rest of the stuff on the pop boosters. People on the Missy's Building Guide have no problem with all this stuff, but for people who are not, it's gonna be a task. It's gonna be quite the challenge, okay? Now, one thing that you wanna remember is that if you do an 85% boost, that you only need the uh what five ninety so like fifteen percent for the remaining one hundred percent so to to do like a sixty percent with the same amount of it's just pointless right you can do like a fifteen percent and get a wider area span than if you just waste it on a lower area coverage with a higher pop boost that basically does nothing for you so just try to remember you know uh, try to add up what your 100% equals and get it as evenly as possible. That's going to be the hardest part is overlapping all this stuff to make it even. So essentially, like I said, a grid layout, you're going to do two rows of pop boosters, something like, like this area here would be, um, why isn't it drawing there? So like do something like this. It's not drawing shit. It's driving me crazy. Okay, 
So you put all the pop boosters between here and this row of houses, and then you're gonna put another two rows of houses and then pop boosters. Now, it's gonna also be challenging for services, police, health, fire, regional, things like that. Another thing that you guys can do is when you go to like the education tab, you know, try to, to get the stuff that is, if you do the hotspots, that's what I was gonna talk to you guys about. Hotspots are extremely expensive expensive to upgrade however for example you you're not going to want to design on your regional maps because you're just going to end up having to take it apart more than likely um what i did was i didn't even want to start designing until i unlocked all five maps another thing that i noticed was with the hot spots is they are extremely expensive so what you're better off doing and i really like the trees so i spent a lot of my coins on trees you're better off saving as many regional coins as possible. Then when you get to a point where you can design, buy as many trees as you want, then go to hotspots. Because hotspots, unless you're somebody who doesn't care about design, hotspots are going to be a huge waste of, of coin. Okay, Because they are like a million and a half regional coins to get them from start to finish. They are an 80% pop boost when completed. And they have a 26 by 28 area span and then they go up to five epic pointers however like i said they cost a really pretty penny in order to upgrade them you also have to meet the population requirements to do so just because you have the uh the currency does not mean you're going to be allowed to upgrade them to the point where you want to now the next thing is the so you've got all of your your stuff covered, you've got everything at 100% pop boost. The next thing is going to be how to upgrade houses quickly and efficiently for the cheapest, basically. So, that being said, when it comes to house upgrades, one thing that a lot of people do is they don't refresh the building materials. Notice how this one is asking for a Christmas item. It is not that the game is still asking me for Christmas items. It's that this request came in when the game was asking for Christmas items. So unless I refresh it, it's, it's going to just be there forever, right? Now, when it comes to regionals, what I noticed when I was, you know, upgrading regionals is that sometimes they would ask for like three yoga mats on, on an upgrade or even like the first upgrade. That's ridiculous. Okay, don't do that. That is absolutely ridiculous. Make sure that you are refreshing your building material requirements to fit a more affordable upgrade. You know, some of these upgrade amounts are just ridiculous. Do not do that, okay? Like this one here, this one wants two motors, one beef, one glue, and then the other two aren't too bad. This one isn't terrible, but it is pretty high for an upgrade. You also want to look at which upgrade it is. This is only like the second or third upgrade. That's ridiculous, okay? This one wants two sunny drinks. That's not terrible, but you can see how these get very, very expensive. Now... If you want to refresh that that uh, house, you just click the refresh button. If you want to transfer it to a different house, you click the circle button and it goes to a totally different house, okay? The next thing is, you know, try to get as much of the, the beach covered um, and you should be good to go. I mean, I recommend not unlocking Frosty until the very end because it's not a very good map. It's horrible to design on. The reason why I unlocked it was one, because when the regionals first came out, we didn't have all five options, we had three. And two, we didn't know what the requirements were gonna be to unlock them, so we didn't know it was gonna be that hard. And three, we had, uh, I had the trees in mind for design, because I do like the frosty trees more than I liked, let's say, at the time, I thought limestone or anything else. So I went based on all of that logic. Now, going back in time, I would have unlocked cactus last purely because of trees. However, um, thinking in terms of success, that's not the right way to go, even if I don't like the cactus trees, because cactus has the biggest area, right? So I would have unlocked Frosty last. If, if I was to do it today is what I mean. I would unlock Frosty. 
So that being said, hopefully that helps you guys. Um, just try to get your grid layout, get your upgrades done for as cheap as possible. Run regional items as much as you can. Get your, um, your regional hotspots upgraded after the fact, maybe even during the Black Friday sale. It's going to take you a long time to save up all that regional currency anyways. And then you get them for, you know, half price. Uh, try to keep your pop boosters as evenly placed as possible. If I was you, I would do your whole grid layout, lay out all of your services, make sure, because you know what people do is they build the homes first and then they have to move everything around all the houses and it makes it so much more difficult. If you unlock the map first, draw the roads first, then another thing you're gonna wanna do is watch the Never Upgrade Roads Again video because these road upgrades are not going to be cheap. When you start putting that kind of people on a map, you're gonna get a ridiculous amount of uh, road notifications and people are gonna move out. So what you're gonna wanna do is set up your three red roads if you don't know what that means, you definitely need to watch that video. That video is going to save you a ton of money. Do not buy these uh, expensive roads for your maps. They're a complete waste of money unless you're talking in terms of design. If you are going to build Omega, that is going to take some time. And you want to basically know that if you're doing Omega for terms of population, you're better off going with Epic projects because Omega require drones and control nets and the fact that they have a higher service demand than epic projects what ends up happening is you actually end up with lower population from omega because of the amount of services that take up on the map whereas if you go with a lower service demand with a slightly just barely lower pop the epics are the way to go plus they get back to you by giving you a coin so there's that and they look better i think but if you insist on having omega you're going to need quite a lot of coins in terms of Omega services and things like that. Okay. Other than that, try not to put anything else on the map. And like I said, if you unlock them uh, one at a time, it is going, you're going to want to take it one step at a time is what I'm trying to say, because it's going to make your game really hard. You know, in terms of epics, uh, deliveries, the contest of mayors, everything gets more difficult with the more regional maps that you unlock you know you've got a higher amount of items being asked for in the epic projects they're expensive they're hard to get you've got production tasks that can come in currency tasks uh, about the only thing that it's helpful for is the regional hq task and that's just because you have more of them to depend on but all the coins tasks and and production tasks are absolute pain the regional factory tasks are a pain because you have to sit there the whole time. So like I said, I would bank in some wins first. Make sure that you are definitely eligible before you think of doing this. So good luck to you guys.